I, I had one teacher who wrote me um, an incredibly long email. It was like a three-page long email, sort of detailing all of the reasons why her job is the most difficult job that there is and why she can't be successful. And it was, you know, talking about how her kids come to school in the morning. They haven't had breakfast the morning of. Nobody helped them with their homework the night before. There's no electricity in the kid's house to have, actually even have light to do their homework. Um, <clears throat> And all of these sort of factors, which are real things, I don't mean to I don't mean to say that those things are not real. But the bottom line is that we can no longer use those things as excuses for why our kids can't be successful. And this is where I will tell you honestly, I differ from a lot of people in the city. A lot of people in the city come up to me and they say, "You know what? We like you. You're smart. You're energetic. You seem to you know be moving very quickly. That's great. There's no way you're going to be able to do this." Because you can't overcome the environmental factors that our kids are living in today. You have to solve the problems around poverty and around parental involvement. And, and unless you do those fundamental things, you're not going to be able to change the educational outcomes of kids. And that's where I completely disagree with a lot of people in this town and frankly with a lot of educators in this town. Because I believe that we need a different kind of educator in this system. If you believe that that laundry list of things are all reasons why kids can't achieve and you think those things are too difficult to overcome, that's okay. You can, you can teach out in Fairfax County and you will do good things for the children out there. That's absolutely fine. But if you're going to teach or work in this school system, in, in the District of Columbia Public Schools, then you have to take personal responsibility for ensuring that despite every single one of those obstacles, that you will ensure that kids are achieving at the highest academic level. It is absolutely possible. We see it in classrooms and in schools day in and day out. I was in a school not long ago where I walked in and it was a uh, it was an alternate route teacher, it was a DC teaching fellow, and if I'm not mistaken, I, I believe she had something to do uh, with getting her certification here at American. An absolutely phenomenal classroom. And this was in, in Ward 5 in one of the neighborhoods that, you know, poor minority kids and all of those things that we were talking about in terms of the disadvantages. I walk into this classroom and this woman is doing amazing things. She had, it was a fourth grade, she had the kids reading a novel. They were all reading aloud, and the novel was about a group of kids who traveled back into time to the days of Greek mythology. Um, and so the, uh, the, the question that the teacher posed when I walked in, she said, um, okay, so the kids travel back in time. Now they want to go back. They have to travel back. So uh, which Greek god, and she had all of the Greek gods and what they were the god of up on posters across the wall, she said, which Greek god do you think these kids should call on to help them travel back in time? So I look up at the wall and I see the god of travel. I'm like, that's the right answer. First kid raises his hand and he says, I would choose Zeus because Zeus is the god of all gods. He's the boss of everybody else. If he tells you to do something, you have to do it. So I'm going with Zeus as my answer. Great answer. I, I hadn't thought of it. Next kid says, um, I choose this guy. This is the god of uh, women, children, and families. And since these are kids who have to go back, she's going to take care of her own people. And so I think that this should be the god that we choose. Another perfect answer that I had not thought of. The next kid raises his hand and he says, I choose this god, which is the god of um, music, arts, and literature. And I thought to myself, okay, this was a total misfire. And then the kid explains that in the book, the, they ha the children had found an old Greek lyre and strummed the lyre, and that's how they got transported back in time. So he's like, well, if they want to, if they want to go back, they got to talk to the god of music because the lyre was what got them there in the first place. Another, uh, the, these kids gave five different answers before somebody said the god of travel. Every single one of them better than the answer that I thought of. And it was clear in this, in this classroom that this teacher had created this community of learners where there were no right or wrong answers. 100% of the kids engaged. The critical thinking skills were amazing. I was in that classroom for about 10, 15 minutes. Then I walked across the hallway to another classroom, same amount of time, 10, 15 minutes, where absolutely nothing was going on, zero. This is a teacher, you know, standing up, and she's flicking the lights on and off. She's like, okay, we need to get quiet. I want everybody quiet. She starts counting, 10, 9, 8. 
I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And the kids were like, oh my gosh, we're waiting for something to happen. And then they're getting loud again. T 10 minutes, same amount of time, nothing happening in that classroom. Same group of kids, same crappy building with no air conditioning, all of that stuff. These two different groups of kids getting totally different educational experiences because of the quality of teacher in front of them in the classroom. And the kids know it. The kids are the ones who I have the most sane conversations with day in and day out. I went to um, uh, Anacostia High School the other day because a group of kids emailed me and they requested um, an audience with me. So I got there and first of all, these kids were prepared. They had their list of issues um, typed up um, and they were issues like 15 staff members, 15 teachers a day on average are absent in a school that has about 60 teachers. How do you think we can learn when, when you know, that, that many of our teachers don't come to school every day? That is a question I could not answer because there is no good answer to that one. And then they actually started telling me about one of, they said, we need, I said, what do you think I can do to improve this school and schools across the city? And the, the first thing that the kids said, great teachers. They didn't talk about, you know, we want a pizza hut in the cafeteria. They didn't talk about vending machines. They didn't talk about, the first thing they said is we need great teachers. And then they went on to tell me about one great teacher that they had. They said this guy, so another interestingly an alternate route teacher who came through the Teach for America program. They said this guy, Mr. Wallace, after school every day he parks himself at the McDonald's down the street. And he does tutoring for all the kids in his pre-calculus class. And if you're hungry, he buys you a hamburger. And he will sit there for hours and, and, and teach us. He's like, we, they said, we need more teachers like that. So afterwards, I go find Mr. Wallace, and I talk to him. And he's in his second year of his Teach for America commitment. I was like, are you going to stay next year? He's like, I don't know. This guy has been beaten down. First of all, he's spending half of his $40,000 salary on hamburgers every night. <laughs> And the second thing is that he's saying that, he, you know, that, that teachers are saying to him, why are you doing that? You can't do that. You're making us look bad. You're supposed to come in at 8 and leave at 3.15. You know, you're, you're breaking the rules. So he's got that kind of thing going on. He doesn't feel like it's an environment where the administration and the, the other sort of folks in the school are really you know, like-minded and, and focused on the same things. Um, he, the man has no prep periods because since 15 people are out a day, he doesn't want the kids to not get anything. So he's in the Spanish class and the English class just doing whatever he can so that the kids can actually, has no prep periods. We, we can't expect our educators our effective educators to operate in that environment and not get burnt out. 